Hello my friends, today I'm going to show you how to make this LCD screen that you can use on any of your robots or screens or displays or anything like that. Now for any point that you find in this tutorial useful then hit that like button and that subscribe button so you can see more of these in the future. Okay, let's get started. So to begin with, what are you going to need? Okay, so I'm not going to go through the process of making a model. You know, you know how to model. I'll just kind of give you a quick overview. I just made this this little robot head and I've assigned a, a little screen to this. So um, all you're going to need to do is to UV unwrap your screen. So that, that's the most important thing. Now, one thing to note when you are modeling these things, you want to not just necessarily set the texture. You, you don't just, you know, assign a material and be done with it, right? Because that's not what you're going to expect in the real world. But, you know, you do you, of course. Um, I would say put a little a rim. This is not the best of rims, quite frankly, but you get the point. It's, uh, you know, your, your screens don't sit directly flat to the surface, okay? So just bear that in mind. The other thing you're going to need is a image texture. If this is if you want um, this, if you want a, like a, an image, like a little face on there or something. So let me just show you which which one I'm using. So I just made this myself. Um, so it's just a little smiley face. That's all it is, and it is uh, it's just like um, transparent, black on transparent, and it's important that you have. The transparent the color doesn't actually matter on the image you know you can have whatever color you like just so long as it's on transparent because we use the alpha to determine where this face is going to sit now i just want to show you the um the uv in so there's the uv over the image so you can see that it actually extends over the edge of the image that doesn't matter it's just as long as it's the right proportions and where it's going to sit. So you can either project this from view, or you can just do a general unwrap, you know, whatever works best for you, that's fine. Um, so that's that's the setup that you need for this. Now let's look, let's have a look at the actual shader. Right, so to begin with, um, so we've got our material output here. Let's start, we need to add a texture. So we're going to go for a Voronoi texture and with Node Wrangler enabled, we can just shift click on that and we can preview it. So we can see there it's, it's a bit kind of, kind of spotty. So what we can do is we can set this to leave it on 3D and then set it to distance to edge. Okay. And now on the randomness, we want to crank this right down. You see, we've kind of got these sort of square or rectangular kind of shapes, which is fine. If you press Control T, it'll add a mapping node, and we want to change this to UV. So now you can see it's in line, in proportion with the actual UV in. You can see we've got more squares there. Okay. Now, in terms of the scale, this is going to determine how how big your squares are. So we can actually crank this. So let's just say fifty, for example. If you want bigger squares, then you just, you know, crank it down. If you want even smaller squares and crank it up. I'll, we'll leave it on 50 to begin with because that just feels about right. It's not too small that you can't see it. It's, uh, it's not so big that it looks unrealistic. So, yeah. So what we're going to do now, add in a color ramp. Now, what you want to do there is you want to change it to constant because we, we don't we either want it black or we want it white essentially so if you drag down the white let me zoom in you can see there that the squares have been made so essentially the white is going to be the pixels and the the uh, black is going to be the, the space around the pixel so you might want tiny little pixels like that, or you might want bigger pixels. So that's your choice. Just, you know, adjust it to suit your, your particular style. So I'm going to, you know, it's kind of chunky, chunky pixels. I, I like the chunkier pixels. Kind of looks like it's a lower resolution. Um, so that, that's kind of what I like, which is absolutely fine. 
Um, so now let's add in a shader. We want the principles BSDF. So we'll just pop that up there and we'll shift control shift click to set that um, as the output for the minute. Now we're not going to plug this in immediately, of course. Um, and I'll show you why shortly, but we do want to pick a nice color. So you might default to using black as your color. Now I don't like that. I don't think that LCD screens should be black. Now this might be my age showing, but I feel that with your LCD screens, you want to crank it into the green to begin with, right? So you give yourself a nice kind of yellowish green color and then drag down drag down the value so it's quite so you just kind of want a hint of green you see there it's not quite black it's just like a little little hint of green and that's what i really really like okay um now we also want to duplicate this so duplicate that and make this to be a little bit lighter so we'll preview that one. So it's a, maybe that's a little bit too light. So just so it's a little bit different to that one. So we can get a little bit of contrast. Okay. And the other thing we want to do is we add in a, a mix shader. Okay. So pop that in there and we will plug that one into there. And then we will use the color from the color ramp to mix between those two. So you can see there. Now that's backwards. I need to flip that over. And just because I like to be neat. So there you can see already we've got the lighter pixels. So this is almost like, you know, when your TV's on and the, and it's black, but you can see that it's on. That's kind of the vibe we're going for there. Now, one of the thing I like to do on this, right? So, in fact, let me just take this, take this, and take this. And um, what we're going to do is we're just going to control G to group that together because it gets a bit messy. I, I hate the size of these. And when you when you kind of like look at that, that's horrible. You don't want that. You don't want that. That's just gross. So I'm going to group these just to keep things nice and neat. But what we want to do is I like to set the roughness and the specular. So full roughness and zero specular. So do that on both of them. All right, and that, that looks very flat. You know, it's not reflecting any light there. Now that's not what you would typically see on the TV. Uh, your LCD screens quite often, they've got a glass layer which reflects things. So what we're going to do is we're just going to crank up the clear coat to, to one. So it's all or nothing with this. Just crank it right up. And then you you get a kind of a shine on there on top of it, but the the pixels themselves, they're still kind of well, the, the matted underneath, but there's the shine on top. So let me just give you an example of what that looks like if you turn the roughness down on the pixels. Let's turn the specular up. Yeah, so you can see there how how the roughness is is affecting the pixels underneath the shine. So it's not changing the sheen but it changes how the pixels are displayed underneath it. So I like to keep that cranked up there. I think that gives a better kind of look to it. Don't know whether you'll agree or not, but that's my view. But, you know, you can change it to suit your, your particular needs. Okay. So now what we need to do is we're going to out of this with a tab in fact no we're not my apologies we're going to go back into this so this one as we know is for the the inner pixels so we're going to take this group input and we're going to put that straight down to the emission strength and we're going to take the emission and match it to this but we're also going to crank this up a little bit more because these are going to be the pixels when they're glowing so you can see there that all of those pixels are now illuminated. Okay, now if we come out of this by tabbing out of the group, 
we're going to grab another input. So we're going to do texture, image texture. And you want to load up your image of the, of your whatever, the face, for example. So um, then what we're going to do is we're going to use the alpha from this. And we're going to add in a, a math. Uh, da, 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 multiply, right. So this is going to control the strength of the actual um, emission, right? One other thing you need to do is, depending on what image you're trying to display, because I'm going for like an 8-bit kind of look, I'm going to change that to closest and that'll make sure that the image is exactly pixel perfect as as to my image. And then where it says repeat, I'm going to change that to clip and that is just because it's extended outside of the UV. Let me just remind you what I'm talking about there. So if we look at the UV Do you see how that has extended out there? So that would actually start to repeat if it, that was made any bigger. So we just set it to clip just for safety. Right, so now this multiply gets plugged in to the emission there. And as we can see now, it's only showing the pixels where the alpha isn't. Now, you might notice that it's not covering the full pixels. And realistically, you can't do that. You, you might be able to do that somehow, maybe using geometry nodes or whatever. But using this texturing, you can't really do that. But what you can do, there's two things you can do to fix this. So the scale of the pixels can be changed. So if you just want to kind of like shift them around, eventually you'll get close to them all fitting. Now, what I'd probably suggest is find something that is pretty close to matching. You might need to, it all depends on your image, really. You might need to, it's kind of close. But then what you can do is you can go into your image and you could like shift this up, for example, maybe shave that off the top. So you're going to have to do a little bit of a combination of getting the right pixel size, matching the image and adjusting the image to suit. But once you get that nailed down, it's going to look absolutely perfect. So that's how you make the, the pixels on the screen. Um, now, if you want to make these kind of like glow and stand out um, in Eevee, let me just go across to Eevee. All you need to do is go on bloom and then that will actually like give you that glow around the edges. In cycles, what you're going to need to do is you come over to the compositor. Where's my nodes? Right, so you're adding a glare node in between the image output and and the the composite and you just set your threshold so your threshold is the light intensity so when you if you if you had it like really like 0 0.1 like pretty much everything in the scene would be glowing if you had it like 10 it's only lights that are giving that value of 10 that would would glow so that's what the threshold means um you said it's a fog glow I always set it to high because it just looks nicer. And this is the, the size of the glow. So that's going to, if you change it down, it'll be a really small glow. If you pop it up, it's going to be a large glow. So, yeah, uh, let's, let's, let's render out this image. So there we go. That is how to make an LCD screen for your marvelous creations. If you have got this far, if you did find this useful, then hit that thumbs up and maybe hit that subscribe button and I will try and push out more useful content for you in the coming weeks. So yeah, I'll see you in the next one.